So how does the spinal cord work? Well, I'll remind you it's part of your central nervous system, so it works very closely with your brain. And the general function is to receive information, sensory signals from the periphery. All right, so that could be, you know, pain signals, pressure, touch. Um, it could be, you know, signals from internal organs. But those sensory neurons need to transmit their signals into the spinal cord. So we can see those here shown in green. So here is just one sensory neuron. So this other end might, let's say, be at the skin and its job is to detect pain. So the pain will activate the neuron, it'll transmit its action potential, it's going to travel then into the spinal cord. And notice that the sensory neuron uses the dorsal root. So this dorsal root is going to have all the sensory neurons. So it could be a pain neuron, it could be a temperature neuron, it could be a touch neuron. Those are all going to be entering using the dorsal root. Uh, their cell bodies, notice this is showing a unipolar sensory neuron, so that would be the structure. And the cell bodies are all going to be clustered together in this dorsal root ganglion. So what that does is it makes that root look like it's kind of swollen. Uh, remember, a ganglion, a synonym of ganglion is swelling. So it makes that dorsal root look a little bit swollen there. So then that signal comes in, and the gray matter is going to determine what it needs, where it needs to go. So if it needs to go up to the brain, maybe it's going to send the signal into a track. Let's say there's a track here that leads up to the brain. Or maybe that signal also has to go into a track over here to get to the brain. Or maybe that signal needs to go immediately back out uh, as a reflex. So this path here, using this kind of black colored interneuron, is a reflex. So maybe you touch something, maybe you touched a hot stove, and we want the signal to go immediately back out so we can move that hand uh, from that stimulus. So there's a lot of integration determining what the signal needs to, where the signal needs to be using the gray matter. Whereas the white matter is just going to be sending that signal, you know, very quickly up to the brain. So the dorsal root contains incoming sensory fibers. The dorsal root ganglion contains the cell bodies of the sensory neurons. All right. So you can imagine if there was some sort of injury to a dorsal root, that would cause anesthesia. So anesthesia is the blockage of signals, sensory signals, into your CNS. The motor nerves are coming out the ventral root. And notice the ventral root does not have a ganglion because the cell bodies are actually located within the spinal cord. All right, so that's the reason you only see a ganglion in the dorsal root and not the ventral root. But this blue neuron might be an autonomic motor neuron. So maybe it's going to an internal organ. Maybe it's going to um, the liver or the um, intestines or some other internal organ. Whereas the purple is just so showing a somatic motor neuron. And that neuron, I know exactly where it's going. It's got to be going to some skeletal muscle. But the point is, both of those are motor and they're packaged together in the ventral root. So if you were to injure only a ventral root, that would cause paralysis. So paralysis is when you can't get a motor signal to the effector, whereas anesthesia is when you block the sensory or incoming signals. So autonomic motor neurons are going to be controlling things like your heart, smooth muscle, organs, and glands, whereas that somatic motor neuron is going to lead to a skeletal muscle. And notice they're all packaged together in the actual spinal nerve. So the spinal nerve is mixed, sensory and motor. The roots are not. Uh, dorsal being sensory, ventral being motor. So that's in essence how the spinal cord brings in signals or brings out signals. Now how does it send the signals up and down? So that function is more in the white matter. 
the white matter is where you're going to find tracks. And this drawing shows basically two types of tracks. In green, it's showing the ascending tracks. The ascending tracks are going to be sensory. So the signals come in, they get routed to one of these tracks, and the signal will then ascend and go up to the brain. The purple areas are where you're going to find motor tracks. So those are going to be signals coming down from the brain, eventually having to go out the ventral root into those spinal nerves. So some examples of these. And you'll notice that I tend to uh, put little asterisks next to the ones that I would like you to know because I think they make sense, right? These make a lot of sense. So this, these areas here are known as spinocerebellar tracts. Now, cerebellar refers to the cerebellum, all right? The cerebellum is the part of your brain that's very important for your coordination. Coordination, balance, right? And in order to determine, you know, how to balance, how to be coordinated, it gets a lot of signals from your muscles, all right? So those signals are going to have to go up to the cerebellum, so they go spinocerebellar. So they go up the spinal cord to get to the cerebellum. All right, so these tracks all are going to get you to the cerebellum. So if you're some sort of what we call proprioception, proprioception is your body movements, all right, muscle movements, joint movements. We're constantly signaling the cerebellum the position of our muscles and joints. And then the cerebellum uses that information to maintain balance. Um, one example of these proprioceptors is called the Golgi tendon organs. Basically, that kind of monitors the tendons of our muscles. And then the muscles have what's called muscle spindles. And that monitors the length of the muscle. So now your cerebellum knows what's going on with the muscles and what's going on with the tendons. And I'll use that information to help us balance. And it's ipsilateral proprioception. So what that means is, you know, the signals from your right side of the body are going up the right side of the spinal cord, right, same side, up to the right side of the cerebellum. If that said contralateral, that means the signal has to go over to the other side. Spinothalamic, that's another one. Spino means it's coming up the spinal cord. Thalamic is in reference to the thalamus. The thalamus is where a lot of your sensory information goes first, and then it gets relayed to other parts of the brain. So what senses have to go to your thalamus? Touch, uh, vague touch, pain, temperature, uh, those signals have to get to the thalamus. So the only way to get to the thalamus is to get into a spinothalamic track. All right. If you're going into the wrong track, you're not getting to the thalamus. All right. Now, what's interesting about the spinothalamic track is the pathway decusates. So decusation means it crosses over to the other side. All right. And it does this at the level of the spinal cord. So the signal will come in, say, on the right, from the right side, let's say your right hand touches something pain that causes pain, that signal crosses over right away to the other side of the spinal cord and then goes up to the opposite side. All right. Some other signals cross at the brainstem, um, but the spinothalamic tracts get their information from the opposite side and, and then goes up the spinal cord. And then there's, a, there's other tracks in this posterior column, fine touch, vibration, uh, two-point discrimination. So that's basically a, a very precise type of uh, sense. Um, but these all have one thing in common. They're going up the spinal cord to some part of the brain. So they are ascending sensory tracks. The purple areas are motor tracks. And there's a number of them. I want you to really focus on one. It's called the lateral corticospinal tract. And the key here is to look at the corticospinal. Notice the spinal part's now at the second half of the word. The first half is part of the brain. So remember, the previous slide, it was spine to brain going up. 
This is brain to spinal cord, so it must be coming down. So these signals are coming from an area of the brain called the cerebral cortex. The cerebral cortex is what controls your skeletal muscles. So you have to send the signal from the cerebral cortex down the spinal cord. So the only way to do that is in a corticospinal tract. And then these neurons are going to go out, right, to muscles. So the primary motor area is the exact location in the cerebrum or cerebral cortex that sends the signal. It travels down. It's got to go down the brain stem. Then it decusates. So it crosses over at an area called the medulla and then goes down the opposite side of the spinal cord. So decusation means you're crossing over. If you're crossing over, you're contralateral. You're going over to the other side, all right, other side of the body. So that means your right side of your brain controls the left side of the body. And the left side of the brain controls the right side of the body. All right. Um, that's probably a good place to stop because now we're going to go into the nerves. So we finished the spinal cord using two videos. Um, we'll try to go over the spinal nerves using the next two videos.